Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox. We do have Florida Governor Ron DeSantis walking up to the podium here, so let's pop up the audio. Emergency Management Executive Director with me. We also have the Attorney General, Ashley Moody. Uh, we're here at Tico Energy in Tampa. They're staging a lot of linemen for the upcoming storm. And we continue to have thousands of linemen pouring into the state. They're being amassed. And then obviously, once the storm passes, they will go and work on power restoration. It is anticipated that there is going to be power outages. So folks have an opportunity to plan for that now. You still have time to make the, the preparations and put your plan in place today, but that time is, is running out. Uh, this storm, I think, as you know, is uh, basically in the area of Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula. It's, it's moving past that, and then it's going to have pretty much a clear runway in the Gulf of Mexico. We, of course, began preparing over the weekend. On Monday, I signed an executive order. We now have 61 of Florida's 67 counties that are in a state of emergency, and they've been, it's been able to help surge resources and help with preparations there. We did get a partial approval of our pre-landfall emergency declaration from FEMA, but we didn't get approved for what we think we need to get approved for. So we're gonna go back and try to get a more robust approval there. Uh, we are going to have uh, a significant impact from this storm. It's a tropical storm now. It is going to become a hurricane. The models vary on how intense, but there's clearly a pathway for this to rapidly intensify prior to making landfall. You'll see these cones that get produced by the National Hurricane Center. You see these spaghetti models that get put out that I see online, and that's fine, and you should look at that, but just understand this is a very big storm. You're gonna have impacts that are far outside of what a spaghetti model would have or what a cone would have. And so here in the Tampa Bay area, None of those spaghetti models or cones necessarily have the eye of the storm hitting Tampa Bay, uh, but even if it's 100 or 200 miles off the coast, you are going to see impacts with storm surge. You're going to see impacts with flooding, and so just be prepared for that. There have been local communities, counties that have issued evacuation orders in a number of Florida counties. You still have time to be able to do that. And so I would heed those warnings. You can, you can hide from the wind and there will be significant wind on this storm, uh, but you gotta run from the water. If you do have a major surge and you stay behind in that, especially if you're in one of these low lying areas, that is potentially hazardous. You do not have to evacuate so that you evacuate far enough to not have any impact of the storm. If you get to higher ground and get in a safe structure like the shelters that have been open, I know in Hillsborough County and in other uh, parts of the state, uh, that will be sufficient. Maybe you have friends that are in higher ground. Maybe you have a hotel that you want to go to. Uh, you don't have to drive hundreds of miles, but if you are told to evacuate and you're in those low-lying areas, just know that there is the potential to have some significant storm surge. The track currently has the the eye of the storm making landfall in Florida sometime Thursday evening in northern Florida. Right now it's in that Wakulla Franklin County area would potentially proceed into the city of Tallahassee. Now these things can wobble one way or another, but it is somewhat remarkable when I looked at this morning's runs, uh, most of those models are pretty much in agreement about the path of this storm. Doesn't mean that they're 100% right, but normally you'll have kind of an average of them uh, but you'll have some that may be further east, some that may be further west. Most of them are, are pretty close together now. So we do anticipate uh, direct impact somewhere in the northern part of Florida, most likely in the Tallahassee region. But it could also toggle east and end up closer to the, the heart of the Big Bend, where we saw with Debbie and where we saw with Hurricane Idalia. But again, uh, you're going to have impacts of this storm inland in the state of Florida, really all across the Florida Peninsula. And even though Southeast Florida was not in our 61 counties, the coastal Southeast part of Florida, they are probably gonna end up with tropical storm force winds as well. So it's a big, big storm, has the potential to have a lot of impacts. So again, you still have time to prepare. 
Uh, make sure that you're executing your plan. Make sure you have the essentials that you need. We're proud to be here at Tico. I know that Floridians have come to really appreciate seeing those trucks coming into the state with the linemen prior to hurricanes. And they love the fact that the storm passes and you have immediately people going out to try to get the power back on as quickly as possible. That's not the way it works in every state in this country, mind you. I think people have seen recent examples where that hasn't been the case at all. So it's great to have that. Uh, I know Tico's proactive. I know our other companies. I've been speaking with the, the, the major companies. I've been speaking with the electrical co-ops, the municipal cooperatives, you name it. They're all hands on deck. And that may not have been true uh, years in the past, but now uh, they're doing this. We have mutual aid from the state that Kevin Guthrie coordinates. And again, we want to get people back on their feet very quickly. Having said that, you will likely lose power Many people will lose power depending on where you are in the state. So just prepare, be prepared for that. Understand that that's something that could happen and have a plan in place so you're able to, to weather that uh, power outage however long it is. And we've been fortunate. If you look at some of our most recent storms, you've had significant outages in terms of the number of customers, but the length in which they were out has been historically low in terms of comparison to other storms in other states. So we want to keep doing that. We're so, with the state's committed to helping marshal resources, but just be prepared for, for losing power. You also need to know your evacuation zone. If you're told to evacuate, know what zone you're in so that you can get to safety. If you have an issue or a question about whether where you live is currently under an evacuation order, you can go to floridadisaster.org backslash evacuation orders, and that will list all the counties that have issued those orders. And so I know that you've seen evacuations in some of the barrier islands up the west coast of Florida. Some of the counties like Wakala and Franklin have done broader evacuation orders. All of that will be on the website. And again, you don't have to get in your car and drive 350 miles away. Uh, you can evacuate safely to higher ground. There's shelters, there's hotels, friends' houses, family. All that is fine. Uh, and, and especially in Florida, the, the structures that would be used for for sheltering are, are going to be hurricane proof. Uh, Low-lying areas, of course, can increase a community's flood risk. Uh, you can learn if the dwelling's at risk by visiting FEMA's map service at msc.fema.gov. If you have questions about shelters, you can go to floridadisaster.org backslash shelters so that you can see what is available in your area. Now, every county in Florida uh, is required to have at least one pet-friendly shelter. So here in Hillsborough, maybe not everyone is pet-friendly. I don't know, maybe they are, but you will absolutely have one, at least one, that is pet-friendly. And please don't leave your pets behind, uh, especially if you're in one of the areas that's more low-lying where you can have significant damage. Uh, you don't want to leave a dog behind uh, not knowing when you're going to be able to get back and be able to be there. So, so please bring your pets. When we're under a state of emergency, the hotels allow pets to go in to the hotels, even some hotels that are not normally pet friendly. So make sure you're taking care of your pets. Uh, Kevin and his team at my direction have marshaled a significant number of resources. They are filling requests from the counties for supplies on everything from vehicles to tarps to generators, as well as additional personnel. As I mentioned, we have thousands of additional linemen pouring into the state. I think we got up to 18,000 yesterday. That number will continue to increase throughout today. We also have Starlink Internet that can be deployed as needed for areas that have internet uh, knocked out. Uh, and we have, as I mentioned yesterday at the briefing, flood protection devices that can go and protect a number of things, but particularly a utility substation. We did do that during T Debbie, it was effective. We have 150,000 linear feet of flood protection devices uh, that, that are in the process of being deployed, but local communities that, that want that, ask Kevin, ask the Florida Division of Emergency Management. We wanna be helpful with that. Uh, Army Corps has some of those as well, 
but we know we have them and we want to be helpful. We also have Florida National Guard standing by with our soldiers. Florida Department of Transportation has lifted weight restrictions and is allowing bypass of way stations for emergency response vehicles, including utility vehicles that are staging for rapid response. Kevin has activated our fuel contracts. So we've got many, many tankers of fuel in addition to the norm coming in. You know, people have been waiting in line for some of the gas. I know in, up in Tallahassee, we saw that yesterday. I don't think any of the stations ran out that we know, but we've been working to make sure that all those are topped off. So that'll continue to go. Uh, and we're going to continue to marshal, to monitor and respond to the storm with all of our different state agencies. Uh, after uh, yesterday afternoon, there are 12 health care facilities ranging from hospitals to nursing homes that are reporting that they are evacuating. And you may see more health care facilities make that call uh, in the ensuing uh, hours. Uh, but obviously today is kind of the time where you would need to do that. So we want to make sure that everybody is safe. Just listen to the information. We try to provide information and then folks can, can make the decisions as best for them and their family. I don't believe in trying to scare everybody and trying to just say the only thing that could happen is worst case. We've said there's a range of possibilities for this storm. Some models have it as a category one, some as a, as a category four. There is a runway for this to rapidly intensify. That's just a fact. You're going to have impacts far beyond the eye of the storm. That's just a fact. So we've been, uh, I think, very thorough about putting out the information as we have it. Uh, there is still uncertainty about the intensity of it. It does have the potential to be a major hurricane and even above what Idalia was, which was close to a Category 4 last year. It was a, it was a strong Category 3. This does have the potential to exceed that. Again, not guaranteed to, but it has the potential to. So make sure you're making the best decisions for yourself and your family. We stand by to be able to respond as soon as the storm hits. I know people are going to be happy to see the linemen that are going to be out there working. I want to thank all the linemen, first of all, our Florida linemen, for what you do. You get appreciated more during the hurricanes than in the normal kind of course of life. But the reality is, is so much of our lives now depend on having the lights on and having the power flowing freely. Uh, that gets interrupted sometimes on these hurricanes. And so we've got a lot of folks in Florida that do a great job for us. And we're going to have a lot of folks in from out of state who are going to be on target and who are going to be helping to restore power as soon as the storm ends. Of course, we've got the full phalanx of uh, agencies and assets that are standing by for search and rescue should that be needed. I will say the last couple of storms, uh, the last two years, 23 and this year, we have not needed as many. Uh, as we've had in the past, and I think part of that is some of the folks in vulnerable areas evacuated. So we'll see what's necessary. Uh, hopefully there won't be a big need, but we have all the agencies and all the assets on standby, everything from high water vehicles to riverine assets to rotary wing aircraft. It's all there and will be deployed as needed. So I want to thank everybody for taking it seriously. I want to thank everybody for who's been involved in the preparations for her, what will become Hurricane Helene. And I want to thank the folks um, here at TICO for hosting us here today. I always talk, you know, I talk to, um, you know, the, the CEO, Archie, and I say, man, we always talk when there's a storm. Like maybe sometimes just got to figure out and talk, like go to a high school football game or do something uh, instead of always being about storms. But nevertheless, we're very proud that so many people across the private sector, across various areas of government, mobilize very quickly when these storms are on the horizon in the state of Florida. So, so thanks for everyone who's been involved. And with that, I'll turn it over to Kevin Guthrie. Thank you, Governor. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. My name is Kevin Guthrie. I'm the Executive Director of the Florida Division of Emergency Management. Uh, Tropical Storm Helene, as the Governor is referred to, is expected to strengthen into a major hurricane before making landfall ac across Florida's Gulf Coast on Thursday. Uh, the state continues to work on more than 750 resource requests from counties and many areas to the south are already beginning to feel the impact from the storm. This morning, we saw some outer bands starting to hit the upper keys, middle and lower keys, as well as Collier, Miami-Dade, and Broward counties. We can expect conditions to continue to intensify throughout the day as the storm gets closer to landfall. Residents should continue to monitor weather alerts 
so you know what watches and warnings your community may be under. And remember that a tropical storm or hurricane warning means that you can expect these conditions in the next 36 hours. As of this press conference, all but three counties, Escambia, Okaloosa, and Santa Rosa, all but three counties in the state of Florida are under some type of tropical storm, flood, storm surge, or hurricane watch or warning at this point in time. So that is 64 out of 67 counties need to pay attention to their alerts starting today. Some may turn off these emergency alerts, but what I would ask you to do in your settings, go back and turn the government alerts on right now. You're gonna to need to listen and be ready to receive those alerts. I think the governor makes a very, very clear point is that there's a wide range of possibilities. Each and every homeowner, each and every business owner, each and every private sector individual needs to make the decision that is best for their family on the conditions that we have right now. But those conditions may very well, in the wide range of possibilities, be a Cat 1 all the way to a Cat 4. But you need to be able to receive those alerts from the government so that you can make the decision best for your family. Maybe the breaking point is Cat 2. Maybe the breaking point is Cat 3. But you got to be able to receive those alerts. So check your phones, go into the settings, make sure that you can receive government alerts from us. There's also a possibility of life-threatening rising water moving inland from the coastline in the next 36 hours along the entire Gulf Coast. I know as we continue to stress this, please do not focus on the forecast cone. The hazards from this large storm over 250 miles from the center will be far, far reaching. Again, we have a classic example of this this morning. Miami-Dade, Broward, and the Upper Keys were not in any type of watch or warning until 5 a.m. this morning when they started to experience some of those outer bands. The tropical storm force winds can be felt up to 250 miles from the center, as I just mentioned. Tornadoes are probable. High winds, life-threatening storm surge, and flooding cannot be ruled out. If you live in a coastal or low-lying community, visit floridadisaster.org slash know, that's K-N-O-W, to find out if you live in an evacuation zone so you can make informed decisions. I wanna be very, very clear about this. Some people may be, for the first time, figuring out what their evacuation zone is. And there have been a lot of evacuations called for for Category A, Evacuation Zone A. There are two different zones that relate to weather. There is FEMA flood zones. And yes, there is a FEMA flood zone A. And it has nothing to do with evacuation zone A. So when you go to that property appraiser's website, you go to our website, we link you to whatever that is. Make sure you look for evacuation zone and a letter. Do not look at the flood zone and a letter. Again, another example, there is an AE flood zone with FEMA. We may call for evacuations between A and E in this disaster. Make sure you focus on the evacuation zone. If you live in manufactured or mobile home and are in the path of the storm impacts, it is not safe to stay in that. Many of our counties, if not all of them, have called for low-lying and manufactured housing evacuations already. If you're not sure if you're in that, again, as the governor has already mentioned, visit floridadisaster.org slash evacuation orders to find out if you are under an evacuation order. If you are ordered to evacuate, please do so. The time to put your disaster plan into action is now. Make sure you're doing that. Make those final plans. Make sure you got stuff for the kids pets, seniors in your household. Remember, you only need to travel tens of miles inland to get to a safer location. Shelters are going to start opening up as soon as Wednesday. If you're unsure about the next steps of what to do, please contact your local county emergency management office. Your yard should be debris free now, especially in this Tampa Bay area. If you can pick it up, put it up. Make sure you secure it. You don't want that to impact somebody, your neighbor. Make sure you have fresh batteries in your supply kit. Make sure if you have them or access to them, hand crank weather radios to get those alerts. And then also be sure that you follow the agency on X and Instagram at F-L-S-E-R-T. That's at F-L-S-E-R-T. And Facebook at F-D-E-M as we continue sharing important information about this storm. Governor, as always, we are successful because you allow us to be successful and give us such a heads up on what we need to be doing. So thank you so much for your leadership and your partnership. Sure.
And so um, I think Kevin mentioned it, I mentioned it, but again, you, know, you can see these forecast cones and that's great, but even if that was 100% accurate, uh, this is a really big storm. You're gonna see impacts uh, up to 250 miles outside the center of the storm. And the way the storms work, Gulf versus Atlantic, it's the eastern side of the storm that is usually the most severe. And so if you're coming up the Gulf Coast of Florida, you're gonna have the entire Gulf Coast where that could be whipping up surge, uh, a lot of winds, all this stuff. You notice he said Okaloosa, Walton, or Okaloosa, Santa Rosa, and Escambia aren't under any kind of watch. This could end up hitting Tallahassee. That's a lot closer uh, to Tallahassee than some of the others on the eastern part of the state of Florida, like Northeast Florida, but it's because a lot of on the on the right side of the storm is just going to cause more problems. That's why, like, when these Atlantic storms come, they brush our coast, and we can get some damage, but most of the damage is out there still in the Atlantic. So you're going to see the more violent side of the storm. It's going to whip up surge. Uh, it's going to have produce high winds that are going to impact the Florida Peninsula from Tampa Bay all the way across to the, the Atlantic coast of Florida. So that'll happen. So please, you have time now to put your plan in place and to make the arrangements. The time's running out though, and you don't wanna be in a situation where you're scurrying around tomorrow. I think you'll probably start seeing impacts probably in the morning, certainly with the wind. I know the storm is likely to be probably about the uh, uh, north, it'll be, have gone far enough north that it'd probably be about equal to Tampa Bay sometime late morning, early afternoon tomorrow, and then hitting probably tomorrow night. And even that can change depending on how this thing goes. It has, I think it's anticipated to move quicker than some of the more recent storms. And there's pluses or minuses to that. Uh, but the reality is today is the day to finalize your preparations and to put your plan in place. So, so please do so, take this seriously and uh, make sure that you're looking out for yourself and your family. With that, I'm happy to take some questions. So here's the thing, you can, if, if there's a evacuation for zone A and you're in zone B and you look around and historically you think you could be invulnerable, there's nothing preventing you from, from going to a shelter, there's nothing preventing you from going to a, a family member's house, a friend's house, hotel, wh whatever you need to do to where you're on higher ground and you're running away from the water. Now we obviously, when we do hurricane response, this is a bottom up thing. Uh, the local counties are responsible for making the call on evac orders, partially because they're there. They have, they, they have the information, they can communicate with the residents, but then also they're responsible for carrying out any orders into effect. For example, sometimes they'll close access to barrier islands. Well, the state, we don't have personnel to do that, so that is what will be done locally. So, so they're all doing that, uh, and I think that you have uh, probably by the end of today, where any orders would probably need to be done to be effective. But again, just because your emergency management says that you may not need to, if you feel that you would be safer doing that, you're always free to do that. Uh, you can come back as soon as the storm ends. And so so you use your judgment depending on, on where you are, depending on the history. People have seen, look, this is not the first rodeo for the state of Florida when it comes to, to hurricanes. It's not the first rodeo for storm surge on the Gulf Coast of Florida. We know some of those areas, particularly in Tampa Bay, are very vulnerable. You have flooding on just run-of-the-mill weather, weather that can happen. And so I think that the local folks get that, and I think they'll be able to make the appropriate calls. But um, if you don't think that they're making the, the right call in terms of not having it broad enough, that does not prevent you from taking whatever action that, that you may deem uh, necessary. I mean, I think if you're looking at this storm, 
the eye of the storm is going to be probably, what would you say, Kevin, 150, 200 miles off this coast, 100 miles at least? At least 140. Yeah, 100, 150 miles will be the eye of the storm. So that impact direct, you know, is going to be out in the Gulf. But the field is so big with the winds, and it's going to churn up a lot of surge that you're likely to see something significant, particularly in the barrier islands and those low-lying areas. And so we always say you can hide from the wind, especially with Florida structures that have been built in modern times, but you run from the water because if that water really does come crashing in, uh, it's not a lot you can do about it at that point. I don't think I don't think you know. I think you prepare to have major outages. I know they've uh, put a lot of resources on the table. We've got folks across the the country that are coming in, and we want to make sure that that those folks are on target and are able to do their job when uh, the storm passes. If you think about Idalia, which was last year, it was almost a Cat Four, was a major hurricane. You had, I think, the fastest restoration that we've had, but then Ian was millions of people out, and you had people in Ian, literally, that Thursday, I guess it, was, it hit on a Wednesday, like that Wednesday night, Pete, trucks were coming in from Miami across Alligator Alley to go to Southwest Florida. So folks are on standby, they're ready to go, and they will go as soon as it's safe to do so, they're gonna do. We also have FDOT that's assisting with cut and toss operations. Sometimes you can, you can fix a, uh, a power outage, but you got to have access to be able to get to where you can do it. If there's a lot of debris on the ground and the roads are not cleared, then it's harder. So FDOT is involved in doing that. We um, you know, would like to have more uh, support from the federal government just in terms of our pre-landfall declaration. They've approved for direct federal, but we think we, it should be broader from what we requested. And so hopefully that will get rectified today. Well, first, that's part of the reason why you have 61 counties under a state of emergency. Because if you look at some of the areas far east of here, uh, you're looking at even potentially significant saturation because of what they've already had. And so there's definitely pockets of the state that are very saturated. Even if you have 8 to 10 inches of rainfall, uh, you know, some hurricanes can dump a lot more than that. But even if you do that, that's building off a lot of rainfall. So that, that went into the calculation about why we're doing state of emergency. Yes, we have resources in North Florida, kind of in the Tallahassee area. We've got it in the Tampa area, and then we have it on the east coast of Florida as well, because I think you are, you do have the potential to see a lot of water rise, just given what we've seen in recent, um, in recent weeks and months with the amount of, of rain that we've gotten. Kevin, you want to address kind of our way, step forward with that? Yeah, so uh, the question was in reference to the FEMA request, what is it we're still looking for? Right now, the, the FEMA request has been limited to uh, direct federal assistance in uh, uh, some counties related to just Cat B, uh, which is emergency protective measures. And then there's even a smaller window for Cat B uh, measures as it relates to evacuations and sheltering. Um, I, I think what's important here is we're, we're going to see a, uh, anywhere, as the governor's mentioned, a Cat 1 to Cat 4 storm. Um, rapid intensification, all you got to do is look at history. When things get into the Gulf, we have rapid intensification, usually two, three uh, numbers ahead of what it, what it was predicted to be. Um, and we know that in North Florida, um, and we know that people in D.C. are not from Florida, um, we have a lot of tree canopy. You just look around this property, there's tree canopy everywhere. That's going to lead to debris problems. And unfortunately, um, you know, we do have some counties. Um, I was talking to someone this morning about uh, a, a physically constrained rural county on our, our on our Gulf Coast that's having to make decisions today because they've been hit by two storms. And they're saying, look, we can't afford to put the police officer out there on overtime directing traffic because we're not guaranteed that we're going to get reimbursed for that security mission or that traffic mission. 
So, you know, these are these are things that where we live, uh, you know, down rubber meets the road. Uh, counties are making decisions based on what's in that declaration. The governor and I submitted, um, I, I, I prepared it, the governor reviewed it and submitted it, the, the request for declaration, which included categories A and B, all things that happened in those two silos, debris removal and all emergency protective measures. We think that's the best way forward. That's our, that's our ask uh, of FEMA, and, and it would certainly help local cities and counties make better decisions, especially when they're physically constrained and living after they've already had two disasters hit them. The other thing um, to just keep in mind, because we're here at TICO, obviously there's a big effort in Florida, traditionally, at least certainly over the last five or six years, to be very forward leaning on power restoration, and that's good. There will be power outages, and some people will use generators to be able to keep the lights on in their residence, and that's fine, but just make sure you're using that generator appropriately. You do not run a generator inside your home or any enclosed structure. It needs to be outside the home. It needs to be a safe distance from any doors and windows. Uh, we have not had, I don't think, generator deaths in the more recent storms. I know in the past we've had, and so I think the message has gotten out but even since Idalia, we've had people that are new to Florida, may never have been through one of these things. So just use the generator appropriately. Do not run the generator in your house. The other thing is, is once you have the storm effects to start to be felt, you really got to have your preparations done. You do not want to be on the road when you have major, major wind and rain that is happening. We typically will see some fatalities every year for people that are out and about past time when, when it would be safe to do. So you have time today to prepare, you have time to do what you need to do, but as we get into tomorrow, you're gonna start seeing effects of this and the effects can get worse very quickly, especially if you're far from home. So just prepare for that and don't put yourself in a situation where you get stuck uh, or you have, God forbid, an accident because of the hazardous conditions. So we uh, put your safety first, uh, make sure that you know that there's risks involved with this. We are gonna go, we're gonna be back in the Emergency Operations Center uh, today. We're gonna fly back to Tallahassee. Uh, our plan is just be hunkered down there, even though the storm's expected to hit there because it's a hurricane proof facility and we have the ability to, to keep everything moving. So everything will go forward in the state of Florida. Kevin and his folks have been at level one now since Tuesday morning, and we'll continue uh, all the way up through impact. And then as soon as the storm passes, uh, make sure that we have the emergency response and power restoration where they need to be. Thanks, everybody.